When we think of Pride, we often think of this. But did you know that the first Pride was a riot? Yes, you heard that right. The first Pride didn't have any rainbows, parades or glitter. Instead, there was violence, bigotry and police brutality. Let me take you back to the night of the 28th of June, 1969. The location is the Stonewall Inn on Christopher Street in Greenwich Village, New York. Stonewall Inn was unofficially known as a mafia-owned gay bar. On this evening, police raided the bar and immediately became violent in their attempts to disperse the queer patrons. The standard procedure in these raids was to line up the patrons and check their identification. Then a female police officer would take customers dressed in women's clothing to the bathroom, where they would physically check that their biology lined up with their gender expression. Anyone physically presenting as a woman who was not biologically female would be arrested. Now let that sink in. Imagine the humiliation, the fear and the indignity that was forced on these people simply for being themselves. This evening, however, things did not go according to plan. Those dressed as women that night refused to go with officers. Those who had not been arrested gathered outside the bar, growing in number to a crowd 10 times the size of those who had been arrested. Stormy De La Vie, a black lesbian woman, was hit over the head by a police baton for complaining that her handcuffs were too tight. She yelled to the crowd, why don't you do something? A call to arms that was answered. The crowd had had enough. They did something. As queer patrons began to riot, the police tried to clear the streets. The crowd started a kick line, dancing and singing their way along the streets while shouting, Gay Pride! Pride! The police responded by viciously beating them with batons. Since that night in 1969, a lot has happened. The coordinated efforts by the LGBTQIA community to demand their liberty, acceptance and equal rights has seen some much needed progress. And while acknowledging all of this progress, we also see that we have a long way to go. Queer history is painful. Queer liberation is powerful. We are not done yet. Welcome to Change Series 3, Pride. Here we go. To start, let's look at some other important dates and moments in time. Between 1973 and 1994, almost all US states banned same-sex marriage. Being gay meant you couldn't marry the one you loved. Conversely, in 1989, Denmark became the first country in the world to legally recognise same-sex partnerships, followed by Norway, Sweden, Greenland and Iceland in the years after. At the same time, Bill Clinton banned the federal government in the US from recognising any same-sex unions. In Canada, the first same-sex marriages were recognised officially in 2003. And the same-sex marriage along with same-sex couples' adoption rights were officially legalised in the Netherlands. The first country in the world to do so! Nice work, Netherlands! Right now in 2021, there are 29 countries where same-sex marriage and same-sex adoptions are legal, either nationwide or in some jurisdictions. That's an amazing achievement. You know, it's not normal to move from sunny Miami to snowy Finland. Let, let's start there. So naturally, a lot of people start to ask, like, what brought me here? They were asking, do I study? I said, no. They were asking, did I come here for work? I said, no. And then they said, oh, you must have come here for love. And I was like, yeah, bingo, that's it. And then the very next question was always, what does your husband do? <sighs> Here we go. And when we talk about 20 years ago, I didn't really always come back and say, oh, my girlfriend does this and that. And I think there were actually times that I even said he does this and that because I just didn't want to be confronting the situation. Around 2008, when we were getting married, I started to care less and less what people thought. Uh, I was happy. She made me happy. And if they weren't OK with me, that was their problem. So there were times that I actually started to say to people that, hey, it's 2021, why are you still assuming that everybody is straight? 
Being able to marry and adopt in 29 countries is absolutely beautiful. But at the same time, it means that there are 166 countries in this world where our entire community do not have equal rights. In 72 of those countries, being gay is illegal. In nine of those, the penalty is death. And guess what's happening in Singapore as well? We do have a clause that's called 377A, which is basically criminalization of sex between two consenting male. You can be jailed up to two years, caning and fined as well. In terms of myself, uh, I'm Asian, I'm male, and hence patriarchy actually runs really deep uh, within my family. So on the personal level, if I find it really, really hard for me to uh, be able to come out to, uh, which I am not to my family, Ooh, this is tougher than I think I thought it is. There's three levels of uh, almost punishment if I do come out from my, the closet itself. So one, family-wise, I, I might be a disgrace to my family. Two, in terms of society, we're being looked down upon almost. And three, it's, uh, I'm actually being looked at as a criminal in Singapore. LGBTQIA plus representation has skyrocketed in recent years. And we can now see ourselves in government, in film, in television, in music, being out and proud and giving us permission to do the same. This is a movement we must continue. We must be committed to active allyship and joyous celebration of our rainbow community. In the next episode, we'll talk about what all those letters LGBTQIA mean. Did you spot the extra T? I sure did. Well, we'll also discuss the issues our community is currently facing. Until then, stay fabulous.